Here we go again. Here we go again. Do you know what I'm referring to? Buckle your seatbelts. Or that's what I thought anyways when I saw these news headlines. Yes, I am talking about Devin. And I'll be honest with you, I woke up two mornings ago, a nice sunny morning, and I thought, oh, check my social. So I go on my Instagram, and I have so many messages from you. And it is, it's hilarious because the messages were, Tiff, is Devin going to take our jobs? Devin, have you seen Devin? What do you think of Devin? And I go, who is Devin? What are you even talking about? Devin? Automatically, I think of it as a human. But boy, was I wrong. In this video, we are going to dive into what exactly is Devin AI capable of? Should you be concerned about your job? What does this mean for the future? We're gonna dive into all those big questions. But before we get into it, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech, tech news, coding, explain everything around tech. All right, let's get into it. So let's start with the biggest question, which is what exactly is Devon AI and where did this come from? Let's take a step back. Devon AI is backed by some of the biggest names in tech or biggest funds in tech, I should say. Peter Thiel, you probably remember him as he's one of the co-founders with Elon Musk of PayPal. He has a massive founders fund and they are one of the investors in Devon AI. Devon AI's parent company is called Cognition. And this is where it gets really interesting. I think it's funny because all of these news articles are saying how Devon AI is going to take over software engineering jobs, but it was created by software engineers. So what is Devon AI capable of? Well, in the promo video, here's what they said. It, I think it started off really interesting, by the way, because in this video, they start off introducing a software engineer as human software engineer. Now we need to differentiate between an AI software engineer and a human software engineer. Then they get into what exactly is Devon AI capable of. But here's why I think this is really interesting. It is capable of, you can prompt something with it and it will then update what tasks it needs to do. So for example, Devon uses machine learning to constantly learn and improve its performance. So it is constantly learning. So of course you can build with Devon end-to-end applications such as websites and even videos, which is really cool. Devon will debug, it has its own built-in browser, and once it's finished a task, if there is something else it needs to do, it does it. Yes, you heard that right. It can fine tune and train its own AI models. All right, this sounds like a lot. I mean, this, this sounds a little intimidating. Uh, I you know when I first saw this video of it, I, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of got a little worried weirded out, it felt weird. And it felt weird that it was named Devin. Not to mention also Devin has applied for jobs on Upwork and got them. Yes, if you were hiring for a developer on Upwork, you might've been hiring Devin. Also too, Devin is up for hire, so you can get on a wait list to actually hire Devin to help build your applications for your company. But here's why I think we don't need to freak out. Well, yet anyways. Just like any new tool when it comes to market, a lot of times there is Sparkle, if you will. And by sparkle, I mean marketing hype. Before we start really freaking out and before you go drop out of your CS degree, let's take a step back and really think about this. It sounds great in theory, it sounds super cool, but that's all. It's just sounds. We haven't seen what it's actually capable of yet. And until we are able to interact with it and build with it, let's not jump to conclusions. I also think it's really important to note that remember when ChatGPT came out? There were so many headlines saying the similar or exact same thing that ChatGPT is going to take over all software engineering jobs. I'm sure we even spoke about it. So before we really get caught up in this cycle or this hype cycle of a tool being released that helps developers, let's take a step back and think of it at its core. Devin, I do believe, will start doing some parts of developer jobs in the sense of more of the smaller tasks. We'll use it as a tool like we use other tools, but will it replace software developers completely? Absolutely not. That shouldn't even be part of this conversation. The reality is if that point comes in time where AI is taking over many jobs, there's going to be a lot of jobs taken over that are not just software developers. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but let's take a step back and realize that this all of this tooling does not just affect software developers. I saw a good comment actually. It was from a product manager and they they said on this comment in social media with Devon AI, they go, well, if I'm the one who is, you know, planning the projects for the engineers and telling them what to do, does this mean my job is gone too? So it really will trickle down into how people are feeling within many roles. I really think we need to start looking at Devon and other AI coding tools 
exactly is what they are, which is tools. I mean, think about when site builders came out such as Wix or so many others now. Now we kind of just think, yeah, they're great for small things, but if we want to build big enterprise applications or websites, you need the good old fashioned human. It does feel a little bit weird, especially when you see this chart here with how far Devin's coding ability is compared to ChatGPT, Claude, and other LLMs. It's pretty staggering. And I do truly believe that tech is changing so quickly, especially now with AI, and we're going to have to become comfortable with evolving with it in order to grow and remain relevant. And the best way to do that is educate yourself on these tools that are coming out that will have a huge impact in the industry or on the industry as a whole. How you can best use them. What does this mean for you? Could you maybe learn more about the architecture side of software development? How could you grow your career past, you know, simple programming? There are so many different, if you really start switching it into this is an opportunity for me to continue to learn and grow, I think it can kind of be exciting. Listen, don't get me wrong, it can feel a little bit terrifying, especially with all of these headlines we see around first AI software engineer going to take out software engineers. It's like, yeah, it can feel a little overwhelming at times, but that's why I wanted to make this video to educate you on what Devon AI really is, where its capabilities lie, which as you've seen and we spoke about, it can you know, build end-to-end -end websites and applications, same with videos, debug, it has its own built-in browser. So yes, it's, it's advanced, let's, let's not sugarcoat it. But if you use it, this advanced tool to your benefit as a developer, or even if you're not a developer, but anyone in the industry, I think you're going to see a lot of really incredible startups come out of this. Being someone who has an idea, but maybe you aren't a developer, now you can go and build that idea. And how cool, how powerful does that feel to make your ideas turn into a reality? When you think of something, you can now build it. That's pretty empowering. I really think we are about to enter an area or a time where everyone is a prompt engineer and honestly, everyone can do the very bare minimum of coding. I hope that's what we're entering into, meaning it's so accessible. The tools to do so are right there. So we just need to take advantage of it. And I think that's a very good spot to be in. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts about Devon. Does this make you feel uncomfortable? Has it gone too far? Or are you feeling excited about using this tool? Leave your candid thoughts down below. I will make sure to respond to every single comment. I love you all. And on that note, it is time for some late dinner.